You know, patience is not waiting. Patience is how we act while we're waiting. So let's just have a little Sela moment. Pause and think about that. How do you act <laughs> while you're waiting? I do what I do because I've seen God's power transform my own life, and He will do it for you. The key to everything is found in God's Word. I'm Joyce Meyer, and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. Well, I'm going to be teaching this weekend a message called, When God When. <laughs> Nobody ever has that, that question, do they? Oh, God, when will my breakthrough come? And you know, if you're frustrated all the time because things aren't happening on your timetable or there's things going on in your life <clears throat> that you don't understand, then you're not going to enjoy your life. We need to live in what the Bible calls the rest of God. It's a special kind of rest that you can have even in the midst of the storms of life. Everything doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to have everything figured out. You replace all that with trust that God is good, that he knows what he's doing, and that he will do the best thing for you at the right time. I want you to get that. Matter of fact, we should say it together and say, God will do the best thing for me at the right time. And I know we're in a hurry and God's not. But being frustrated about how long you have to wait will not get God to hurry. God gives us dreams and visions, or I just put hope. He gives us hope for change. We want to change. We want to see our loved ones change. We want to see the world change. We want our finances to change. There's always something that we want to change. And God is in the business of changing things, but he never tells us when. And it's frustrating, of course, when you have something real big in your heart, it seems to you like it should happen right away, at least that's the way it seems to me, and it rarely ever does happen right away, because to be honest, whatever it is we're wanting God to do in our life, usually we have to go through some kind of a preparation period in order for that to happen. And we don't get to skip over those steps and waiting doesn't have to be a time of misery if we trust God that he will do things not on our timing, but in his timing and at the right time. And might I add, just because you feel like you're ready <laughs> in no way means that you are ready. And another thing I want to mention is when you're praying for other people, God can't override their will just to answer your prayer. <laughs> because everybody has a free will. So when you pray for somebody else, you've got to give God time to deal with them. And the best thing to do is just be a good example to them while you're in the process of waiting. And obviously, when we pray for somebody else, there's no 100% guarantee that they're going to give in to God. But one thing's for sure if nobody prays for them, God will never even have an opening to work in their life. And sometimes you just have to keep that in mind that when you pray, it gives God an opening to work on them. My husband always has said several times when you start praying for somebody, they're going to act worse before they act better. You know why? Because when God starts, how many of you, when God is dealing with you, you don't act so good all the time? <laughs> well, that, so when you pray for somebody and you see them acting worse, you should say, great. <laughs> God is working.
God reserves the knowledge of timing for his own wisdom. Why does God withhold information from us? Why doesn't he just tell us why and when? Well, a handful of reasons. Number one, if we knew how long we had to wait, <laughs> so God uses this little word soon. <laughs> Don't you love it when somebody with a prophetic gift comes through town and they give you a word? The Lord says, soon you're going to be sent out into your ministry. You get so excited, but you don't know any more than you did before they came in. <laughs> it took me a while to figure that out. I, I, back in the 70s, there was a lot of the gifts of the Spirit that were operating more heavily in the church at that season than they seem to be now, and different people with different gifts would come to our church and it seemed like invariably they'd call me out and give me a word, and it was almost always the same thing. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And to be honest, I thought, if I get that word one more time, I am going to scream. Because <laughs> after about the seventh or eighth time, I figured out that it wasn't really telling me anything. It didn't tell me anything. And God finally told me, he says, all you got to do is just keep on keeping on until the time comes. You know, everybody waits. It's not a matter of whether you will wait or not. I can just, if you've got any questions about that, I can tell you tonight, you will wait. It's, nobody just has a dream or a vision or a plan or a desire or a hope, and they just get it immediately. Everybody waits. Moses had a desire to deliver his people from the bondage that they were in as slaves in Egypt. And he went to the desert for 40 years in the wilderness. Have you ever noticed that when you're waiting, sometimes you feel like you're in the wilderness? And what was he out there for? For training. I wish God could train us on a mountaintop, but it seems he always has to do it in a furnace or a wilderness or a desert or at a job we hate or, you know, <laughs> something like that. Joseph waited 13 years in prison for something that he didn't even do. He wasn't even guilty. But, you know, the interesting thing about Joseph is it appears, I don't know if he ever had a grouchy day, but none of them are listed in the Bible, and it just appears that Joseph had such a great attitude about all these unfair things that happened to him, and the result was that everywhere he went, God gave him favor. When he was in Potiphar's house, he got a little too much favor with Potiphar's wife, and she went after him, and then that favor ended up putting him in prison, but he also got favor in prison, and no matter where he was, he got favor. And see, that can happen to you, and it can happen to me. If we learn to wait with a good attitude, yeah. you know what the best thing is that you can do while you're waiting? Help somebody else. If you want to know, well, what am I, what am I supposed to do while well, I'm just waiting on God? <laughs> Help somebody else. That's the very best thing that you can do. And you know, Joseph did that. He helped the baker and the butler, and they got out of prison, and he said, don't forget me, and they got out and just forgot him right away. <laughs> but he never got bitter about it. He never got angry. He wasn't bitter at his brothers who sold him into slavery, when they were in need, he helped them. And so if we learn how to wait patiently, you know, patience is not waiting. Patience is how we act while we're waiting. So let's just have a little Sela moment, pause and think about that. How do you act 
while you're waiting. Well, well, can we just go on, Joyce, and see what your next point is? <laughs> and part of this training is to get us to that point where we can wait and stay in the rest of God. 40 years Moses waited, 13 years for Joseph. Abraham waited 20 years <laughs> to see God's promise come to pass. And in the process, he took matters into his own hands and got himself into a lot of trouble. And when we do that, when we decide to try to do what only God can do, then we always just put God's answer off longer. Amen? David waited 20 years. He was anointed to be king and didn't wear the crown for 20 years after that. I received a call to preach the gospel 43 years ago in February of 1976. And I was doing something all throughout those 43 years, but it started so little and it changed so slowly that it almost seems like nothing is happening. Although when you get on the other side of things and you have what you've been waiting for, you can look back and see that you were making progress. And what we really need to learn how to do is to celebrate our little victories. Come on, all along the way. One piece of advice I can give you, and if you don't get anything but this, it'll be worth you coming. Stop looking at how far you have to go and start celebrating how far you've come. Amen? And just a word to my TV audience. I want to make sure you know that I know that you're out there. And this is for you too. Stop thinking about how far you have to go and everything that's still wrong with you and everything that's wrong in your life and everything that's wrong with your kids and everything that's wrong with your job. And just learn to celebrate the good things, the positive things. The more you make out of the good things, the smaller the bad things will become. And don't we tend to focus on the bad stuff? You shouldn't do that. So celebrate your little victories. I didn't know how to do that when I was waiting for God to do what he was going to do in my life. But when God put, the day that God spoke to me, and I didn't hear audible words, but it just came so strong in my heart, you're going to go all over the world and preach the gospel. Well, I was nobody from nowhere, and I hadn't been to seminary. I hadn't been to Bible college. I had a 12th grade education, what, you know, almost failed English. <laughs> and, oh, sure, I'm going to speak all over the world. But you know what? When <laughs> Here's the interesting thing. When God speaks something to your heart, as crazy as it may sound, you believe it. Right? At least you think about believing it. Sometimes it doesn't take the other side of your brain long to talk you out of it, but deep down inside, you can't get rid of it. A lot of people want to know, how, how do I know if God is calling me? Well, I jotted down three quick little ways. Number one, if God's calling you to do something, you're going to have a passion to do it, an unreasonable passion. It may not make sense to everybody else, but you can't get rid of it. From the day that God spoke to my heart, I have wanted with more than anything else in the world to teach his word. When God speaks to you about something that he wants you to do, it's going to be on your mind. You're going to think about it. You're going to think about it a lot. You're going to pray about it. 
And the other thing, and this is a big thing, is when God puts something on your heart that he wants you to do, you will sacrifice anything to get it. <laughs> you didn't like the sacrifice word much. <laughs> sacrifice. Jesus sacrificed, didn't he? The apostles sacrificed. Jesus said, follow me, and they just walked off from their jobs and their businesses and just, okay, followed him. I quit a full-time job making good money so I could stay home and study for this ministry that I thought God told me that I was gonna have, which at that time was a handful of people that I was teaching in my living room floor. You will sacrifice you will do things that to other people don't seem to make any sense at all, and half the time you'll think you're crazy yourself. <laughs> people always want to know, how do, I, how do I know if it's God? You know, I just think really when God speaks to you, you just know. You just know, because when, here's the thing, when God calls you to do something, he gives you the faith to do it. A man said to me one time, he said, don't you realize that you and Dave operate under a supernatural gift of faith where this ministry is concerned? And I, I never did really get it until then, but we had faith to do things that were absolutely nuts. I mean, things that sane people wouldn't do. But you believe, you believe that you can because God gives you the faith unto every man is given the measure of faith that he needs to do whatever it is that God has called him to do. Amen? And then sometimes, I guess the final test is if you believe God's calling you to do something but you're not sure, well, just step out and find out. It won't take very long and you'll know. <laughs> I wanted to serve God and I didn't know for sure what I was supposed to do at first and I just did anything and everything just to serve God. I mean, I knew I wanted to teach, but the door hadn't opened for that yet. And I worked in the nursery for about a week, week and a half, maybe two. <laughs> and that's all it took for me and the kids to know that wasn't my call. <laughs> so you, you just try a few things and see what fits. <laughs> Amen. A little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. You know, when the Israelites were making their journey through the wilderness, they'd come out of bondage in Egypt, but they weren't in the promised land yet. They were like, most of us are, they were hearing about the promised land, but they weren't actually living in it or they weren't living in all of it. And I love how the Bible says that they were, led by a cloud by day and the fire by night. And the Bible says that whenever the cloud stopped, they stopped. They camped. And then they journeyed. And then they camped. And then they journeyed. And that's just like our lives. You know, we journey for a while. We're going somewhere. Nothing's happening. We're just trudging along. And then... It's kind of tough, and then we, we get to camp for a little while. We, we get to rest and, and camp at a place of victory for a little while. And then all of a sudden, without much warning, God says it's time to journey some more. And then you head off in another direction for where you're headed. God does things a little bit at a time. Deuteronomy 7.22 says he delivers us from our enemies little by little. And you know why we get things little by little? To keep us from getting in pride. People that are shooting star overnight successes rarely ever make it for very long because they're not spiritually prepared to handle that kind of attention. Amen? You better pray instead. Instead of God, give it to me now. 
you better pray, God, don't give it to me until you know I'm ready. Amen. Now, you know, God could do things faster. There's no doubt about that. Whatever it is that you're wanting God to do, he could do it in a moment. But the Bible says in Exodus 13, 17, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. Now, that's a very important part of scripture if we're gonna talk about timing because there was a shorter route that God could have led them and there is a shorter route that God could take you. There would have been a shorter route that God could take me. But he said he didn't do that because they weren't ready for war. Now, what does that mean to us? You know, every time you come up higher, the devil comes against you harder. Every time you get more of something, there has to be less of you. What did John the Baptist say? Whenever his disciples came and started complaining, well, now everybody's flocking to Jesus and he's baptizing too and, you know, he's becoming more popular than us. And John said, he must increase and I must decrease. In order for God to increase in your life, there has to be a decrease in you. And a lot of that comes in how you think about yourself and how you see yourself. God doesn't want any of us to have a bad attitude about ourselves, but he never wants us to think that we're better than anybody else. Come on. And have you ever noticed that some, not all, but some people who have important positions seem to mistreat people that are not as important as they are in their estimation. But here's the thing, everybody is equally important to God. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. One of the worst things that we can, mis can do is to mistreat other people. <laughs> I mean, God takes it very personally. Well, you know, I wasn't ready. I thought I was ready, but I wasn't ready to stand firm. I didn't know when God put it on my heart to teach the word that I was gonna get asked to leave my church. See, we think when God wants to do something good in our life that everybody's gonna be happy for us. <laughs> but has anybody found out that when, when God gives you favor and you progress that not everybody's happy Amen. for you? And sometimes it's shocking because a lot of times it's the people that are the closest to you. The people that you would think really should believe you and be for you and be happy for you. And, but Jesus' family was like that. They didn't, they didn't believe him. They, did, they wanted him to stop acting like a nut. You know, if, you're, if you really are who you say you are, then do a miracle, do something. And you know what Jesus said? My time has not yet come. Your time is any time, but my time has not yet come. He understood timing, and we have to understand timing. We can't be jumping out ahead of God just trying to prove to somebody that we're right. When will the time come? See, I didn't know about all the criticism I was gonna get. I didn't know that when you get on television, that then you just have a few million people that can find something wrong with you. <laughs> oh yeah, we get, we get some interesting stuff. <laughs> My earrings are too long, they're too flashy, they're this, they're that. But I didn't realize the things that were gonna happen to me. See, the church I was in, they didn't, they didn't believe in women preachers and I didn't know that I was gonna have to give up my church and lose a lot of my friends and you know I wasn't I wasn't ready yet I had to get stronger in the Lord and how do you get stronger in the Lord by going through things come on when do you grow when you're going through things when do you grow not when you're getting what you want 
when you're not getting what you want and you don't give up. You know when you grow? When you're not getting what you want, but you keep doing what's right anyway. Because here, here's a little secret. We can't do what's right just to get a result. Took me a long time to learn that. You do what's right because it's right. And because it's God's will. And you make your mind up that you'll do it till Jesus comes back if you never see one result this side of heaven.